Well, hello class and parents. This is our first attempt at a flipped classroom lesson. Uh, for, for the parents who aren't really familiar with flipped classrooms, we'll sort of give you an idea of what it's about. We talked about it with the kids and basically what the flipped classroom is, is a way that uh, the kids can actually learn their lesson at home via a video or a tutorial of some sort. And, uh, and then actually come into school the next day and do their homework with me. So what it is basically is, is exactly what it says. So uh, normally when kids come into the classroom uh, for a lesson in math, um, for example, they'll learn the lesson from me. And, uh, you know, sometimes they might not master that lesson. They might not quite get it uh, when they learn it from me. And then they'll go home and they'll try to do their homework. And then you're pulling your hair out trying to help them. So the beauty of the flipped classroom is that they can actually learn the lesson at home through a video or a tutorial that they can, you know, stop, pause, replay uh, as many times as they need to to master the lesson. And then the next day they come in and they learn, uh, or actually they, they do their homework with me so that I can help them one-on-one. -on -one. So in many cases, some kids will do pretty well learning the lesson, and the next day they'll be able to do their homework independently. But then there's going to be some kids who might quite, you know, not gotten the lesson, so they, they would like to come in and get some one-on-one -on -one time with me to help them uh, reteach the lesson. So very excited about this and the kids are very familiar with it and uh, what I'll do is, is let them actually turn to page 63 in their textbooks and I'll give you some time to do that. So once they've turned to page 63 what we're going to do now is actually just take a look at the distributive property uh, definition of the top. If the kids remember today, we actually uh, worked on the distributive property and we modeled it uh, through uh, some models that we drew on grid paper. And uh, hopefully those models help the kids understand a little bit about the distributive property by visually seeing how we how we actually do it. Uh, what the lesson is tonight is that we're gonna we're gonna actually show you some pencil and paper math through the active board here. Uh, to give you an idea of how to, how to you know, eventually do distributive property and, and hopefully do it mentally in your head. So the distributive property in my definition is basically a different way of multiplying um, so that you can use mental math um, when multiplying two and sometimes even three digit numbers. And uh, what we do with distributive property is basically break up uh, say a two digit number um, based on the value of the digits and multiply it by another factor. And it's a lot easier for me to show you this, but first let's look at the definition on page 63, which is a little complicated, but we'll read it anyway. When you multiply the sum of two or more add-ends by a factor, the product is the same as if you multiplied each add-end by the factor and then added the products. It's a really sort of complicated definition, so it's a lot easier if I sort of show you how to do the distributive property. But if you remember, that's actually one of our vocab words, as well as partial products, which we'll talk about in just a second. So the problem we're going to do is the problem at the, the top of the page there. It's 5 times 16. So we take the 5 and we multiply it by the 16, and we basically break the 16 up into two add-ends. Uh, based on the value of their digits, and I'll show you that here. We, uh, we draw the parentheses, which means multiply, and then we take the value of the 1, and we find that it's 10, and the value of the 6, which is 6, and we turn them into two add-ends, so that, as you can see, of course, 10 plus 6 equals 16. It's a different way of multiplying. So what we're going to do is distribute now by multiplying the 5 by the 10, which eventually, hopefully, you'll be able to do in your head. Uh, right now, I do want you to, to show your work, so we'll be writing all of this out. and I want you to write it out as, as organized as I am, uh, if you can. So we multiply the 5 by the 10, and we get 50. And then we multiply the 5 by the 6, and get 30. And then what we do is we add those two together. And what those two numbers are called are partial products. They're part of the total product. And then when we add them together, we will get the total product of 80. So that's basically how the distributive property works. And uh, 
so what I'd like to do is basically show you another way of doing it. This is way one. We'll call this way one. This is the way I'm going to want you to do it, way one. But I'm going to show you the way um, as well that you might do it in your head. And I know you're used to vertical math, so we're going to do it in a vertical fashion, lining up just like you normally would vertically. And normally you would multiply the six by the five in the ones place. But what we're going to do now with distributed property is actually start with the, the greatest digit, uh, which would be the left to the right. And again, we'll do the same thing. We'll take the value of the 1, which is 10, and we'll multiply it by 5. So we'll do 5 times 10, which is 50. And then we will do the 5 times 6, just like we did in way 1, which is oh, a little problem there, 30. And then we add those two together. And again, the 50 and the 30 uh, are the partial products. So that's way 2. And then we add those partial products together and we get 80. So it's just a different way of doing it vertically now so that you can sort of understand it that way as well. But I'm going to want you to do it uh, the first way uh, because it, I think it really shows your work uh, well and you can actually see the two partial products that you're adding and the, and the way that you got them. So let's try another problem. I'm having a little trouble with the active board today so just bear with me. But again we'll take uh, 6 times 18 now and we'll break up the 18 into two add-ends based on the value of their digits and we'll multiply the 6 by the 10 which is 60 which you'll be able to do hopefully in your head eventually but it's okay if you're writing it out that's what I want you to do. I want you to write it out so that you see it visually and I use these lines to connect the two factors so that I don't forget any factors in multiplying. And then we do the 6 times the 8, which is 48, and we add the 2 together, and we get 108. So that's way 1. Let's uh, again show you way 2. So way 2, we would line it up vertically. A little trouble with the board there again, as we sometimes do. And it's 18 times 6, and again I multiply the 6 by the value of the 10, or the 1, I'm sorry, and it's 10, so 6 times 10 is 60. And then the value of the 8, which is 8, and we get 48 and again add them and we get 108 the same answer uh, two different ways of multiplying but way one is the way I'm gonna want you to do some of your practice problems this evening in your copybook so that's the distributor property sort of a, a better idea of how it works today we did the models and you noticed in the models that's what we did as well we broke up that double digit into two add-ends based on the value of their digits. You can also do this with uh, three-digit multiplication. Oh my, I'm having a little trouble here. Let's see. Uh, maybe we could try to erase that and rewrite that. So three-digit numbers we can also use distributive property with. And it's the same concept, you know, basically. But we're breaking up the three digits again into three different add-ends and it's best that I show you. So let's take uh, a problem like 3 times 232. We multiply the 3 in parentheses. We break up the 232 and it's basically expanded form which you all are familiar with. The 200 plus the 30 plus the 2. It's all the value of each digit. And then we multiply the 3 by each one of those add-ins. So we get 3 times 200, we connect those two, and then we get uh, the 3, we do the 3 times the 30, and that will give us, and you notice I'm lining these up nice and neat, these partial products based on value, very based on place value, which is so important, and I'm going to want you to do that too. So we got 90, and then we have 3 times 2, and we have 6, lining up the equal signs nice and neat, and we add them up and we get 696. And again, this time we have three partial products because it's a three-digit di three number. So those partial products are added up and we get the 696. So what I'd like you guys to do now is to practice this um, in your books, your copy books. So what I'd like you to do is actually uh, stay on page 63 here. And I want you to do, let's say, uh, numbers 6 through 12. So we'll do numbers 6 through 12 in your copy books to practice and use way 1 like I wanted you to. If you have to go back and replay that, feel free. And, uh, and go ahead and do those in your copy books. 
so that you can sort of, you know, get better practice in mastering the distributed property. And then tomorrow morning, you'll come in and we'll have you do your homework with me. So great job, everybody. I think we all did pretty, pretty well there. And uh, we'll uh, see how this turns out tomorrow. Have a good night.